We next look at a small frame structure. Uh, this example is taken uh, from the excellent book on system reliability by Thoff, Christensen and Morozu. Uh, so this frame has two elements, uh, one beam, one column, and there are two loads, uh, two point loads acting on them. Uh, now there are many different ways in which we could define uh, failure for such a structure. Uh, it would also depend on what kind of material behavior uh, it has. Is it brittle, is it ductile, or is it something in between? Um, uh, for example, we could define failure as loss of stability uh, in terms of softening by a certain degree, uh, in terms of excessive deflection, uh, in terms of member fracture. Uh, if we want to talk about member failure, then there are several failure theories that we could invoke. For example, maximum principal stress, uh, maximum octahedral shear stress, and so on and so forth. Um, here, uh, we take a, a popular approach of defining failure for a frame uh, in terms of the maximum work that the maximum plastic work that can be absorbed by the system. So uh, we have to define a set of fundamental mechanisms. Uh, this uh, structure can have six potential hinges. Uh, the locations are at nodes one, two, three, four, five, and six, and uh, it is three degree redundant, three degree statically redundant. So uh, there could be three, six minus three, uh, three fundamental mechanisms. Now obviously these fundamental mechanisms are not unique, uh, but here uh, we have uh, three that I have taken from the book. Uh, so let's uh, solve it for uh, the, let's go through the steps for the first mechanism. Uh, so let's define uh, theta i as the rotation of uh, hinge i, uh, i going from 1 to 6. Uh, let R i be the plastic moment resistance uh, at hinge i and let delta i be the displacement uh, of, of hinge i. So uh, if we, uh, we can, by inspection, we can clearly see that uh, uh, theta 1 and theta 3 have to be equal uh, and we can also uh, impose compatibility and um, conclude that theta 2 uh, has to be the sum of theta 1 and theta 3 and uh, the displacement under point load 2 delta 2 will be uh, theta 1 L over 2. So with these things uh, defined we now uh, invoke energy balance so uh, the work done by P1 uh, if it equals the work done by the hinges, we have this equation. And if we now uh, express delta 2 in terms of theta, uh, we get the limit state uh, where the two, the, the work and the energy uh, are equal uh, in terms of the equation that you see on the screen. Um, so uh, any excess work would in imply failure so we can define any imbalance so we define failure as the uh, the external work done being more than the uh, maximum work that can be dissipated by the system so uh, the failure uh, in the first mechanism uh, is given by the inequality that you see on the screen now uh, if you want to work through uh, the, the other two mechanisms, mechanisms 2 and 3, uh, please pause the video. Uh, otherwise, let me go and uh, present the solution. So, for the mechanism 2, the answer would be uh, given in terms of R4, R5 and R6 as you see on the screen. And mechanism 3 uh, does not involve any work done by uh, the forces uh, as they have been defined here. Uh, so, uh, the mechanism 3 has a limit state given in terms of only R3 and R4, uh, P1 or P2 are not involved.
So now here we have a system reliability problem uh, because uh, any one of these would cause system failure. So I have a series kind of arrangement, uh, a union of the three individual mechanisms. So this would be uh, the, the problem formulation, the failure description for a frame structure like this.